Okay. And so, yeah, now that it's started, Tasha, would you like to pray? Sure, Pastor. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a glorious moment to convene in class, to learn about your word, to apply to our life of the prophetic and the, uh, the apostolic. We're so grateful that your word, even over 2,000 years ago, it is still relevant. It is still relevant today, and it's still relevant in each and our, our lives, each and every one of the students. I thank you so much for directing our path. And, and, and Pastor Nancy continue to cover her and strengthen her, give her wisdom as she imparts in our, in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daisha, for, for praying. Uh, I said yesterday that we will start with the discussion, the first 10 minutes. We had um, the topic on... 50 emerging trends um, uh, in the in the church and uh, this ha has to do with the apostolic uh, anointing so if you've gone through it uh, and you can you know share your learning or ha whatever questions you have we'll clarify that and then we can you know get into today's uh, chapter so if you've gone through it or if you haven't don't worry too much you, you can just open up the notes and just scan through the points uh please take two minutes to do that uh, it'll be good that we clarify any doubts uh, regarding this particular chapter and only then proceed to the next one so just have a quick look um which page pastor Okay, in the notes, uh, this would be page number Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Um, it might sound a little repetitive, Pastor. Um, I want to apologize. The, the, I'm, I'm just been sitting with. Uh, yesterday there was a point uh, which uh, spoke about the mm -hmm. word apostle or apostleship uh, being mm -hmm. demystified. Yes. So just around that. And I'm still mm -hmm. I'm still trying to kind of uh, work around that. And um, yes. so when I when I look yes. through the 50, 60 emerging trends, um, mm -hmm. and I'm reflecting mm -hmm. back to what we've learned in the past, like you know, like a lot of it is similar to what we learned in believers' authority and demonology. So mm -hmm. a lot of the points mm -hmm. resonate with that. Like whatever a believer can do looks okay. like an apostle can do and then uh, similarly there are um, sorry my network is not that great uh, let me know if you want no, no, me to no, repeat. That's fine. no i can hear you very well um, yes go ahead okay um so uh, so again um so so this uh, so what i'm struggling with is on one end uh, i'm trying to demystify uh, apostleship uh, mm. but then again the other other end is like it looks like almost every believer uh, can call themselves apostle or or even you know say like i've been i've i'm, I'm in the off like i uh, like like i mean if so i'm very practical example like like would it be too weird if um, someone called you apostle nancy you know, yeah it'll be or, really or, weird yeah 
yeah so so, so an but again it's, it's, yeah, yeah yes. so so or or someone introduces and says like you know is uh, pastor ashish who is a uh, evangelist mm. apostle prophet mm. so it's it's so one is around the title ship uh, and another is again demystifying it but again mm-hmm. other other is separating so just around the titles so i'm, I'm that, that's that's what i'm kind of working with okay okay uh, you know, especially well, in terms of again when i'm looking at the trends it's mm-hmm. uh, the, the except for one or two which is like you know there's something mm-hmm. mentioned around working with muslim and jewish community so that's that that was a new point that i came across correct. working with correct hollywood and media so that was something so one or except one or two points um, mm. most of it seems pretty familiar that's right yes yes thank you yeah okay that's thank you samuel so in the 50 points you said that uh, most of them are familiar only the ones that Uh, are about touching new communities that is different so that's good good to know that you're already uh, you know you you have understood all the other points now coming to the title of an apostle so you see the way we must understand the titles not just the apostle but also the prophet and the teacher and um the pastor all these titles no uh we know that god wants us to honor people in leadership so that is always there there's always the due respect there is always the due honor for the calling of god on somebody's life um and their uh their their uh, response or obedience to god in in receiving uh, holding on to that calling living out that calling and all of that so when we when we call somebody by a title uh it's okay it's okay to uh, affirm that they are in that function or they are you know, if you want to put it in a very um, you know um technical way that there is a release of that particular anointing upon their lives so it's okay to that extent but the reason why there is a point about demystifying um, the the apostle is also because somehow when it comes to this particular title and this particular call you know the office of an apostle history would uh, history is witness that uh, an apostle has been regarded very highly or apostles have been regarded very highly starting from the early um you know uh, the early church now if you take the example of paul you know paul uh, in the island of malta he goes there and then you know couple of things happen he um uh he you know they they make a fire and then a snake uh, a viper comes to attack him it it uh, strikes him but he doesn't die and the people are ready to literally worship him okay but then he says okay don't worship me it's god whom you have to worship similarly i think it was lystra earlier on where uh, <clears throat> um paul and uh, i forget who the other person was but they both went and they ministered to uh, a lame person and uh, the response was similar people were ready to worship uh, the uh, you know these missionaries so the apostles because of the way the anointing manifests through their life you know they have been held in very high regard and uh, you know people could even kind of forget that they are human because that's the way in which the anointing manifests so i i was just listing out a couple of um, points for us uh, about you know like the uh, the key categories that we have seen just let me just put the those points here on the chat okay so uh, a few of them so some categories i i put it out for you um to describe the the manifestation of the apostolic if if we were to categorize the 50 points it would fall under one or you know one or two of these uh, uh, topics that i have put in the chat so increased uh, supernatural expansion into territories a uh, pioneering governmental authority new revelation they provide vision you know, they have incredible foresight uh, they uh, uh, also engage in social reforms they are fathers to the body okay so uh, the apostles 
can be regarded so highly that people forget they are human and that is the reason we have to uh, learn to honor them but not put them on a pedestal so that's the whole point um, when you know you you read about demystifying the apostle okay otherwise people think wow all these amazing abilities in an individual something something um, you know incredible of course we are not um, subtract thing from the fact that the person has worked hard and you know they have honored the call of god on their lives they have worked hard all that is there but still at the end of the day you know uh we i i don't know if um okay there is the code of honor apc publication which you all have uh, gone through in your first year but we also used to have a conference known as level ground and we really you know believe in that here at all people's church where we believe that uh, you know whoever we are as a child of god um everybody is on level ground we all carry anointings we all carry callings um and there is due honor for that but then you know, we're all on level ground we're accountable to god we need to live a holy life and uh, you know just 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 be simple and uh, relatable uh, as as people of god so you know that conference we used to have that uh, earlier and we we still have that if uh, people ask for that conference you know we will be organizing it in different cities it's mainly uh, something that we do for pastors and leaders right now so um yeah so just sort of uh, summarizing everything that i said i'm saying we honor the call but we must not put the person on a pedestal and that is very likely to happen um, for the office of an apostle okay so we want to prevent that so that that is uh, what i have been saying now coming to the other point that you raised where you said that um, looking at the functions of an apostle it feels like every believer can do it which is true okay it's it's very true every believer is apostolic and we are going to uh, uh, you know discuss about that a little later so all of us are apostolic and the anointing can function at a certain capacity through our lives but you know going back to the progression of the prophetic um, call he said that all believers can be prophetic but there is a person called into the office of a prophet so the capacity is completely different and the the um, a uh, distinguishing feature is the governmental authority remember that term governmental authority so a prophet carries governmental authority which means that uh, you know the extent of the anointing is great and their responsibility is great their accountability to god will also be great okay so that is governmental authority now just Uh, you know sort of uh, bring that into the apostolic so every believer can be apostolic all of us can conquer new territories for god but we are not apostles an apostle is somebody whose ability for the apostolic anointing is you know at the highest level and uh, he or she carries governmental authority so governmental authority together with that comes um, you know great responsibility you know decision making capacity accountability to god and you know all of that so there's a very big difference okay so we can be an uh, apostolic believer we can also have apostolic ministries but that does not make us an apostle so sam two two things that i i felt you know you were uh, wanting clarity about does it does it uh, make sense yes 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 it does pastor to okay, get okay. thank you great great yes thank you so much so good uh, i think we we have an idea of um, what the apostolic anointing is supposed to do and what apostles um, Uh, do and you know honestly like it would be easy for me to just say the names of uh, three or four people and uh, tell you tell you that hey this is an apostle that is an apostle uh, but i'm really holding myself back from doing that because um 
it's it's like you know even the current day uh, there are movements current uh, current day there are several movements actually and uh, especially you know north america and and places like that you have apostolic movements and there are many well known faces attached to these movements uh, however you know there are also a couple of um, you know practices or or um, uh you know it, it's like we can't we can't uh, um justify everything that is done uh, under the under the umbrella of being apostolic or having an apostolic mantle or an apostolic calling so uh it it would be rather confusing like if i bring up names and say host oh, so and so is an apostle so so is an apostle so so i mean i just leave it up to you you uh, the best thing yeah, in fact uh, some of the some of the um, you know books that I, i'm reading about the apostolic you know there what i what i feel uh, is being said is that we can observe the function we can observe the function and then you know uh, be able to tell that uh, a, a certain person or a certain ministry is apostolic okay and um, uh, also uh, it's not necessary to use the title okay and a lot of uh, people who are doing apostolic work very good apostolic work uh, don't necessarily use the title okay so they just do the work they don't they are not called as apostle so and so you know apostle this and that so uh, going with the title is you know uh, i don't know i, I see that uh, it's it's all that important um, so even if someone's not called by the title apostle if we see the manifestation of all these um, functions through their lives uh, we are clear that hey god is using a particular person as an apostle okay uh, and another thing is that generally uh, for us to observe this kind of um, um, you know like the, from some through somebody's life you observe all these things happening expanding into new territories and uh, you know then carrying governmental authority interacting with leadership so uh, it could take a while before we see all these things happen through somebody's life so you know the the best way to uh, assess and uh, confirm that somebody is an apostle is to just observe observe their life observe uh, the anointing which is being released through their lives and to see the impact that that anointing is making okay so uh, that's how we could say that you know a certain person is an apostle so uh, you know i could put out some names for you right away and even if you google you will find some names on the internet but then you know we could always get into uh, an argument or you know uh, say oh okay why are you calling so and so an apostle you know uh, i know that this is happening through their life but that is something that's not happening so you know i i don't want to get into all that and which is why i haven't mentioned a single name uh, over here in our class okay so uh, yes uh, taisha you have a question Yes, Pastor. Um, based on this list, right, with the sixty, yeah. um, yes. is it that we're saying when we the person should have he or she should have mm -hmm. all of them, or we're saying these are the observants? When we see these, we we know that this is the apostolic working. They're working in the office of the apostle. Yeah. So uh, we could safely say most of them. Okay. Not all, but most. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. Any any uh, thoughts? Any questions in line with what we are discussing right now? Yes, yes, Christopher. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well, very well, thank yes. you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, actually, I just wanted to get get some 
clarity on this point number 13, mm -hmm. which is uh, containing the ERC, ERC and doctrinal divisions that keep the church separate and divided, mm -hmm. defending the mm -hmm. truth and uh, preventing apostasy from infiltrate, infiltrating the church. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just wanted to kind of, uh, I guess, understand, um, you know, mm -hmm. the um, mm -hmm. The yeah. way this has been done, um, mm. you know, from an apostolic um, a ministry point of view, mm. um, because I'm, I'm again, I'm just sort of uh, doing this uh, kind of comment where um, you know, if you look at the at a at a, at a sort of a list uh, or number of you know number of Christians mm. and. Um, not that we want to focus on numbers, but more from a point of view of, you know, the doctrines that have been that are being preached uh, by a majority of of Christians, of being followed and preached rather, um, you know, by a majority of Christians. If you just look at the numbers, mm. uh, if we look at, you know, you know again, I, I'm not sure how current my statistics are, but you know, if you look at number of Christians being about approximately about 2.6, 2.7 uh, billion. Mm -hmm. um, you have um, within that uh, nearly half that are Catholics. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's Protestants and there's Anglicans and, you know, it all sort of flows through. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lutheranism, uh, which is probably, uh, you know, came about uh, because of the, uh, the Reformation and, uh, you know, when Martin Luther actually came in and, you know, pointed out quite a few um, areas that, you know, that were, some of the practices were wrong as well as you know, the doctrines were not, were not according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, that was, uh, that, that is probably about somewhere around 250 million. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's about maybe around, a, uh, about, a, um, you know, I mean, it's a very, a relatively a small number. So mm -hmm. I, I guess where I'm coming from is, um, as we as we are as we are you know learning more about um, uh, in the doctrines about how um, we need to live our lives uh, according to you know uh, um, how Christ can live live his life and uh, it is um, I guess a combination of of doctrines and you know guidance that we we get from. Or the you know sorry the foundations that we get from the from the from the, the word of God and how we practice it. Um, there seems mm -hmm. to be uh, a big sort of you know divide. Um, that's, I guess why you know the church is separated and divided. So I just want to understand from an um, from an apostolic um, ministry point of view mm -hmm. um, how this is being done. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know how this, you know, as pointed out there, you know, as, as a as a trend, how this is being done, and what are you know what would be some of the areas that um, uh, you know, that, that are being focused upon. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, uh, Christopher. Really good observation there. Um, so you know, looking back at the biblical model, we know that the apostles were very committed to the doctrine. So even when you begin, uh, I think it's Acts 2 or Acts 4, you see that people were getting together in homes, they were breaking bread, they were also uh, learning the apostles' doctrines, it says. Okay, so the apostles' doctrines. So at that time, we know that there were uh, 12 apostles, uh, Matthias included. Mm, and, um, you know, uh, we, we had, you know, other people also part of the, the group uh, by that time. And then there were the emerging apostles. You know, you had the uh, apostle James, the brother of Jesus, who's not part of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, but you know, he was another apostle who rose up and took care of uh, the church in Jerusalem. So, you know, the apostles basically at that time, and they were, what were they doing? They were teaching their doctrine. They were very particular about their doctrine. And then when the issue of circumcision arose, uh, somewhere around Acts 14, they are so upset that, you know, they they uh, take it up 
like they they contend they they literally quarrel with the people are bringing in these uh, teachings from you know the judean region and then you know they go they make sure that it is um, sorted out in the in the main headquarter which is jerusalem and then the the uh, decree is made or you know the standard is set it is all written out and it is um, announced to all the believers you know across all the different regions uh, you know of of uh, israel so in this manner the apostles were guarding they were guarding the apostles doctrine what is the apostles doctrine at that time you know we know that they would have held on to uh, the teachings of jesus because when jesus was ministering on the earth he was talking about the kingdom of god and then there were you know a couple of other subjects that he focused on so they were holding on to all the teachings of jesus plus they held on to um uh, what jesus was learning from the scriptures so you know you have those um uh, five books the torah uh, so jesus also studied from them and you know he grew up as a devout uh, jew so they would have um, given honor and respect to the 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 jewish scriptures so that makes up the apostles doctrine and from then on you know they they carried on teaching what they knew and you know then we have the canon of scripture where later you know some of the epistles written by apostles um Uh, some more apostles who emerged later you had uh, apostle paul who who uh, rose up as a you know mighty um, figure in the early church so he also um, wrote letters that also got included right so now we have the revelation of god's word in the form of the bible or the logos which we hold on to as the um, uh, the the scriptures and our doctrine is from there and as you rightly pointed out uh, christopher uh, there are many um teachings out there now the the thing is we have to preserve and even jude talks about it content for the faith so what we know as um i suppose that's where the term like you know the gospel truth uh, so whatever we know as truth we have to hold on to it and we should never let it get uh, diluted uh, in any sense so um how do we do that one of the ways in which we see the apostles doing that is teaching teaching the accurate uh, word of god and whenever they see uh, uh, you know some issues that would um, change the standards of god's word they immediately address that and you know they let the people know that come on you know that's not what the scripture says but this is what the scripture says so uh, to uh, to sort of uh, contend against contend with any false doctrine that is one of the ways in which we have to preserve the truth of god's word so that would mean um uh, you know um, writing up writing up um um yeah, god's truth you know in in a way that can be uh, understood in a way that um you have uh, scriptures to substantiate what you're saying and you know you're saying hey this is the doctrine now we can't we cannot go anywhere away from it so basically we have to preserve the doctrine in that way write it down and continue to preach it and propagate it so in that way we safeguard the doctrine and if there's anything wrong that is coming up we'll have to question that okay we'll have to question that now talking about the different denominations uh you see there are some uh, as as long as as we've been saying uh, you know um, even when we talked about kingdom of god how house of god um see as long as people are born again okay people are born again and there are uh, some contentions on peripheral issues now i'm just saying you know maybe it's a cultural issue a cultural issue like um head coverings for women now this is a subject that you know uh yeah it does have uh, implications but then if if two groups if they just say okay we are going to follow head coverings and you know another group says we are not going to follow head coverings it's it's actually kind of okay like those who want to follow head coverings well and good 
you, you know you carry on because that's how even paul addresses that matter first corinthians chapter 11 towards the end of that passage he says that we don't have any such traditions in the churches of god but you know if if that particular church that he is addressing they want to have head coverings that's okay so there are certain peripheral subjects cultural matters where it's okay to let the different denominations carry on with you know uh some of these things okay we want to wear this color they don't want to wear that color it doesn't matter but when it comes to the core matters you know core matters that's where the issue lies you know the core matters we cannot like things like trinity things like uh, the deity of the lord jesus christ things like the person of the holy spirit you know if uh, if there is an issue in the doctrine in the core matters then you know we really have to put our foot down and say come on this is not happening this is not the right doctrine and we'll have to contend for it so this is the way in which you know we 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 um preserve the uh, doctrine which uh, which we have received you know the the canon of scripture we hold on to that now another very the reason i said good question is because when you look at the epistles of uh, uh, apostle paul or apostle james um okay james yeah he doesn't talk too much about it but apostle john apostle peter all of them bring up the matter of false apostles okay all of them bring up the issue of um, wrong teaching wrong standards and they say beware in the last days there will be there will be people who will um come up with all kinds of teachings that actually take you away from the truth of god god's word that will take you away from worshiping god you know and um the way we had the test for the prophetic what is genuinely from god does it really draw me closer to god does it really make me honor god more does it really make me consecrate my life um to god does it make my life holy you know these are all questions we have to ask is it in line with uh, god's written word so this similar tests apply for the apostolic as well so if we if we do um conclude that you know uh, something is you know false apostolic or someone is a false apostle then what we generally see um you know the the bible apostles doing is they call it out like i think uh, john in in third john is it he calls out this one man called diotrephus who is um Uh, very selfish and causing division among the people and uh, you know he he was a, a worker with with uh, john but you know he went his own way and he kind of um, made a mess of the calling on his life but john apostle john calls it out and he says hey be careful about this man called diotrephus so uh, yeah so you know we will see the core matters of the faith um, questioned uh christopher uh and uh, you know there will be uh, as you observe you know the apostolic unfolding from somebody's life you know if at all you are able to see that hey this is not leading me anywhere close to god um then you know we we can contend that's where that whole point comes in uh, and you know we'll have to stand up in one way or the other we either put out the the right doctrine uh, in in the public forum and say this is what scripture says and this is how i have substantiated or we we simply uh, call out the rock doctrine wrong doctrine or we call out the um, you know the the false apostle yeah so i i hope uh, it has answered your question Uh, Christopher, is that okay? Okay, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, I don't uh, know. Okay, I'm meeting up this uh, tab. Uh, yes, I think it did answer the question. Uh, mm. I guess what I wanted to also understand a little bit is um, mm. a little more about. Uh, uh, I mean, I think there was there was a mention about this um, this Antioch uh, church. I think this is mm. point about. Uh, the six i think uh and um again i'm not sure if i'm, I'm i've uh, you know 
using the right reference. Yeah. Uh, as I understand, there's these churches that uh, that uh, are these evangel uh, evangelical churches that were that came up in uh, in the U.S. in Texas actually, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they have really spread, uh, you know, very uh, very much in uh, in the U.S. And uh, what I what I was just I'm trying to understand is from a point of view of um, denomination versus non-denomination and where there are some uh, you know fundamental um, differences in doctrine mm -hmm. um, we have uh, uh, you know um, this will be taught you know in, in this in this in this bible college also you know that there are some fundamentals that uh, that we have to that we have to hold on to and um, I have um, I've just um, I mean again I've not, I've not done too much of uh, you know, uh, research on this but you know just going back to the, the way Martin Luther actually you know how it how it sort of broke up uh, you know, how the Protestant uh, churches uh, broke away from from the Catholic churches and he had some 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 I mean he had three main ideas um, which I think resonate very well with some of the things that we have done in the Bible College. Uh, you know where we have one was basically about uh, you know the faith and, and the grace provided by 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 God. It was not good works that you know brings us salvation. So that is one fundamental thing which which uh, uh, the principle of uh, of uh, what Martin Luther was was uh, claiming. The other one was that the Bible, the final source of truth about God in heaven, and uh, I think that's again something that uh, we've been taught. The third one actually is very, I think, quite key is that um, the, the church is, is made up of, of believers and not just the clergy, not just the priests. You know, um, something that I think uh, uh, was very, very prevalent in, in, in the uh, denomination churches, uh, you know, where the, where the, um, the clergy and the priests were sort of elevated to a position where they sort of you know, put themselves in between the the, the the believers uh, and and God, you know. So that's how they, you know, they're able to sort of uh, position themselves, able to you know, to go to uh, you know, perform the right of the um, the act of conf confession, for example. So um, I guess to uh, sort of uh, this uh, this point that I make you as short as possible. Um, what I tried wanted to understand from it. From a from a trend perspective, um, where have been some of the areas where uh, churches, maybe the Antioch Church, for example, where have they sort of focused on worked along with the denominous churches to try and uh, ensure that you know the doctrines, uh, uh, you know, some fundamental doctrines are really true, and uh, you know, I don't know how successful they've been, but still, you know, um, where have been some of those areas? Okay, so uh, Christopher, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you're saying that are there are there examples of uh, churches working together to guard doctrine? Correct, correct. Yeah, that's right. Guard doctrine and um, ensure that you know, in some ways, it is becoming. Uh, you know, it is. Uh, they have they have moved uh, the some of these you know, churches. Uh, to do something that is that, that really is uh, you know, fundamentally uh, right, correct, you know, and, and right according to according to the Bible. Uh, so uh, yeah, you know, this is uh, one of the mm. examples, and uh, you know, as in that in that trend, has that been I have that have there been some examples, uh, recent examples of that. Mm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Christopher. So I think the Reformation in itself is, uh, um, you know, a starting point where uh, Martin Luther wanted to guard the doctrine about salvation, you know, by um, grace to faith. So that it it started i mean it's not started but you know that's a that's a great reference point and um, you know uh, going forward 
as we've been learning about church history, we talked about the different, um, you know, the 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 progression. We said the Anabaptists who were uh, who were practicing water baptism, repentance, and and so you know that that whole uh, that whole uh, doctrine about salvation and then uh, affirming that through water baptism. They were. They were guarding it. The Anabaptists, the Puritans, um, were more about holiness. So uh, we know that there was a great influence of of the Puritans on uh, people like um, you know John Wesley, the uh, the the holiness movement that that came about. So John Wesley, I forget his first name, Whittaker. Uh, a very you know famous uh, i think uh, europe european preacher uh, through whom many people were saved so you know the doctrine of holiness that sort of um, started people started recognizing that that is what uh, the the word of god speaks about so salvation is one thing but then living out that christian life with holiness is also very important so you know then uh, during that time at uh, it was the 1800s they they kind of um you know they they went about preaching about holiness and a righteous life and uh you know right standing before god and, and you know in that way the doctrine was guarded and then later on you know we talk about the healing movement uh, where uh, people saw through um you know the release of god's anointing many men and women rose up and you uh, have references of tent meetings where the power of god was poured out on people and healings were taking place physical uh, healings restorations were taking place so you know you see in in all of these ways you uh, you see that the truth of god's word you know it's being held on to yeah this is there in the bible and god is uh, moving in this manner and come on we are going to hold on to what the bible says and then of course you know 1905 azusa street revival and uh, the pentecostal movement and the outpouring of the holy spirit and all that so uh, even doctrine or uh, the truth of god's word regarding all these matters it kind of you know started becoming firmer and firmer and many people were backing it up so you know people to show their um, uh, aff affirmation they formed uh, certain denominations and said okay we are going to believe in the baptism in the holy spirit so that's how uh, it it uh, you know people were holding on to the doctrine uh, now how else uh, have we seen doctrine being preserved in history uh, i think people have risen up like the other day i was telling you about the shepherding movement when things started going wrong uh, uh, in discipling uh, there were many leaders who stood up and said that this is not correct this is not the kind of discipling that the bible talks about so you know we are we are um, uh, not going to identify with this particular movement so there have also been times where people have stood up when things have gone wrong and they have disassociated themselves with you know certain doctrines um, like uh, incidentally we were talking about uh, you know false apostles in my third year uh, class as well so uh, you know we uh, recently uh, not recently a few years ago there was there was a particular teaching that was coming to some parts of south india um which sounded so biblical, but then uh, at the core of it, it's only re uh, recently that I found out that the so-called person who's preaching from the Bible and has uh, hundreds and thousands of churches under him uh, doesn't believe in salvation. He says, like, saved from what? Okay, but here is a person who's preaching from the Bible and who is... Uh, you know, propagating all kinds of teaching. So when this happened uh, a few years ago, uh, I know uh, personally that there there were uh, you know pastors fellowships, pastors groups uh, in um, some cities of South India who put out uh, you know word against this particular apostle and said you know this is the kind of teaching he's bringing. It's not biblical. Like please don't attend the meetings. Uh, and and so you know many people were warned about it and they did not even go. And I'm so grateful that they didn't go because you know uh, supposedly he's manifesting the supernatural and you know crazy things are happening. You know money is appearing and gold dust is appearing. Nothing wrong with the manifestations, but what is the core of it all? The person does not even believe in salvation, uh, but calling uh, themselves an apostle. So, how did a uh, um, you know a con contending this doctrine take place? 
pastors leaders uh, unitedly stood up against the doctrine and they they question and they even um, forbid this person from doing holding their meetings i think that's fantastic you know the unity of pastors um, to guard the doctrine uh, is is very very important when the core matters of our faith are questioned you know if false apostles rising up the unity of the body of christ where everyone stands up and says come on you can't do this this is not right and we are calling you out okay so things like this have happened christopher i'm just giving you you know examples from here and there uh, this is the way in which the body of christ has uh, stood up and i hope it continues to stand up does does that help yes thanks yeah okay great yes so nice good you know very practical uh, questions uh, you all are asking and this is how we are understanding no and clarifying our our um, understanding of the apostolic so that's wonderful anything else maybe we can take up one more question before we wrap up today's class All right. Okay. Great. So, uh, okay. Ab Abhishek says uh, practically how to grow in the apostolic. So, uh, yeah. So, how to grow in the apostolic anointing is very similar, um, Abhishek, to growing in any uh, anointing, uh, which is to pursue it. You know, you desire it to manifest uh, through your life. Have faith. because any uh, anointing any gift of the uh, holy spirit um is activated through faith so when we carry faith for that just like uh, prophetic you know when i have faith and i increase in faith there will be a greater release of the prophetic gifts from my life through my life so in the same way when uh, my faith in the apostolic what god is doing through the apostolic it begins to increase then there will be a greater manifestation of the apostolic through my life so desire it um, increase in faith and of course you know for everything to manifest i have to step out if i don't step out of the boat and if i don't take the risk of walking on the water i will never know that i can actually walk on the water so you have to step out of the boat and take the steps that god is urging you to take so that would be the three things uh, i think i would say to practically grow in any anointing uh, also the apostolic okay great wonderful so let's uh, wrap up this uh, morning's class uh, next week we have good friday or on friday so uh, we'll just wait to hear what um, yeah i think it will be a day off for everyone so thursday we will have the class and i'll see how best i can uh, if possible i'll just kind of summarize all the following chapters and complete it if not we we still have time we can have some good discussions uh, the following week as well okay we'll see how it goes okay so can i request uh, someone anyone who's comfortable to please pray and close today's class shall pray yes yes please oh heavenly father thank you for the good knowledge that you've taught us today and that my prayer that is going to change our life to your honor and glory i commit everybody father as you proceed to other classes you know that you're going to cover us with your blood for the world i pray trust me in the mighty name of your son jesus christ amen Amen. Thank you. Thank you Kennedy. Thank you everyone. God bless you. Uh and uh, you know have a blessed weekend. We will meet again next week. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Amen. Thank you. God bless you everyone.